you would be light year. You you would catapult to your goals if you would embrace rejection and and embrace embarrassment because there's really no such thing. Let me ask you a question real quick, and I'll give you three and four. What if Steve Jobs was embarrassed? Y'all do know they fired him from Apple as he started the company. Him and Wozniak and a few other people, of course, always behind the scenes. He got fired. Right. What if he was embarrassed and just went to his shell? Steve Jobs went and showed him, look, y'all going to need me more than y'all think in about 15 years. Right. What if Bill Gates was embarrassed? What if after Michael Jordan got cut from his um, ninth grade team, I believe, in high school, the coach cut him? What if he was embarrassed and, and chose not to live out his purpose and become an icon and basketball legend? What if Kobe Bryant was embarrassed when he shot the two air balls? Only basketball fans know this. When he was younger, this is when he was wearing eight, not twenty-four. Number eight, Kobe shot two air balls in like the conference finals, and I think Utah ended up going to the finals instead of the Lakers. He shot two air balls like in the last like twenty seconds. What if he was embarrassed and said, "Man, this just this just not for me." Don, no, that's right. His first playoff game, two air balls that literally cost them the game in the series. But he came back with a vengeance. What if half the people you know were just too embarrassed? What if Tom Cruise was too embarrassed to go on his audition? What if Oprah was too embarrassed because she was raped, she was molested as a child and growing up in the South and all this? What if she was too embarrassed to become a news anchor and end up owning or running Oprah Winfrey the show then buying Harpo Studios, where her show was taped, then now owning Old Magazine, where she's on every cover, and then now owning her own network, OWN, Oprah Winfrey Network. If that ain't the coolest story I've ever heard in my life, I don't know what is. Own OWN, Oprah Winfrey Network? <laughs> Come on, Oprah. Don't do them like that, Oprah. But she ain't embarrassed. See, when y'all going to step into your greatness and stop worrying about what other people think about your vision? That's all I'm trying to do tonight is just give you a little motivation to get inspired. And if I give you five more inches, that's about like this, five more inches of self-esteem, you might get closer to your financial goals, closer than you think. Here we go. Number three. These are the four things that people avoid that sabotage their success. This keynote, when I did it on stage, y'all know I'm a lot different on stage. You don't, may not know this, but I'm a lot different on stage than I am sitting in this chair, <laughs> okay, on a computer. Um, are in the Inspiration Series. There's a bonus in the Inspiration Series, too, that I'm not going to tell you. But number three is shame. Shame, shame, shame. Look, let me tell you guys something. Anytime you try to do something big, you're going to make some mistakes. But your mistakes shouldn't be shameful. So what you found? And you made some mistakes. The system is designed for a whole bunch of people to file bankruptcy. That's why they got bankruptcy laws. And so what? You had a car repo. And you signed a contract and you fell on some hard times. And you couldn't pay the note. And you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just always been like this. What are you ashamed of? Okay, you got divorced. Why am I divorced with public? Blah, blah. Look, were you unhappy? Yeah. Are the public people in your house? <laughs> nah. Are, are the public people sleeping with your husband? Sleeping with your wife? Nah. Are you miserable? I was at the time. Get out. But people so... <laughs> Somebody said I'm cold. I, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's for me or not. But it is kind of cold. But I'm serious, man. You gotta toughen up. Look, why are people so ashamed? I got divorced. And you were unhappy. I filed bankruptcy. That's why the law is on the books. If your income will never catch up with your debt, you need to go in and cut your losses and learn from it and move on. And Brian, I lost a house. Me too. And <laughs> I, buy, I have foreclosure. Me too. And look, anytime you try to do big things, big things happen to you, good and bad. 
So why are you letting shame look? Shame is a direct reflection of your past. You see what I'm saying? Shame is a direct reflection of your past. And as long as you keep living in your past, that's exactly the results you're going to have. So I, I said this on the last webinar, but it's very important. Obstacles only exist in physical form. They don't exist in your mind. A, a, a true obstacle only exists in physical form. But what you do is you make obst obstacles exist in your mind. True obstacles only exist in physical form. They don't exist mentally, but you make physical form exist mentally. That's why they keep happening in physical form. Let me say that again. Obstacles only truly exist in physical form, but you make them exist mentally. And because you make them exist mentally, that's why they exist in physical form. So you can learn to not make them exist mentally and only the really obstacle you have is a real hurdle. Like, like a hurdle that you like a hurdler that you jump over, right? A barricade in the street. Those are obstacles. A barrel in the street, a tire in the middle of the road, somebody's bumper. Those are real obstacles. The ones you create up here manifest in front of you as life's obstacles, but they don't really exist. You putting them there. Like like rejection, like embarrassment, like shame. Get over it. Like I said on the page, rewind, get over yourself. Get over yourself. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up because I've kept y'all long enough. Number four, so in other words, shame has to, do, has to deal with your past. Forget, you gotta move forward, man. You gotta move forward. I don't care what happened to you. Not, let, me, let me stop saying I don't care. Whatever happened to you when you were a child, you're an adult now and you can't keep letting that cripple your success. You got to find out what the purpose is, what your plan is. And you don't do that by being ashamed of what happened to you in the past. That's why God gave you three tenses, past, present, and future. You're supposed to live them in that order. Past, present, and future. Number four. Woo! Big one. Guilt. Guilt. Here is why this is deadly. Because when people can't do something, they always want to keep you from doing it. Here's why. Your success highlights other people's failure. In other words, when you get off your butt and show that success is possible for you, when you get off your butt and show that a little bit of effort can bring a lot of results compounded over time, when you get off your butt and show that you can go from nothing to something, get the house you want, have the investments you like, drive the car you want, and the people around you don't do it, they have to put a guilt trip on you. Let me tell you guys something. It has nothing to do with you. It's got everything to do with them. When my friends tried to put a guilt trip on me, as you guys know, they bought the rewinds. I told that story called the wedding crasher, where I had to crash one of my friend's weddings because they would give me a hard time at the wedding. I won't ruin it. But I went to a wedding and they surrounded me and was surprised to see Mr. Busybody, Mr. Money. And I, had, I said, look, don't make me crash your wedding. Don't make me feel guilty about the fact that we haven't seen each other in 10 years. I've been focused on my career. You've been focused on your relationship. So guess what? We have gotten the results from what we focus on. You get married, I'm wealthy. You see? So go get married. <laughs> in other words, you get what you focus on. So when people try to make you feel guilty, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. There was a young lady um, last night on my midnight oil, when I was burning the midnight oil on Facebook. She said, how do I stop feeling guilty about money? I hope she's on here. Well, you got to remember, the reason people feel guilty about money is because somebody else has you feeling guilty about money. And the reason somebody else has you feel, feeling guilty about money is usually because they don't have any. That I can promise you. If anybody ever makes you feel guilty about money, check their account or look at their lifestyle. I want you to really understand that. And I'm not, I'm not trying to speak from a vain perspective here. 
that is all on them. Listen, you can't succeed and become wealthy if you're still hanging with somebody who doesn't want the same thing because they are going to look at you as a, you're removing their excuse. So if we all just stay over here broke, I'm cool with you. I ride with you on that. But the minute you start succeeding, I got to pull you down or make you feel guilty and stab you a little bit about succeeding so that we both can stay down here so I won't have to do anything. That's guilt. Guilt is real. So people will put guilt trips on you all the time because they can't do what you're trying to do. Guilt has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. So many people try to make me feel guilty, man. I promise you. Brian, we don't hang with you no more. Brian, you're not spending time with your son. Brian, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. I just sat there and listened. You finished? Yeah. Okay, well, trust me. I spend more time with my son in three years than you have in 10. You know why? Because I paid the price when he was six months. Now, I promise you, you don't remember me not being there for six months. And I promise you right now, when he's 12 and when he was three, one, two, eight, seven, nine, eleven, I spent more time with him in three years than you have in 15 years with yours. So don't try to make me feel guilty because let's be honest, you was at work from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you couldn't be spending that much time with your child, can you? This is what I told one of my friends. I said, now I work from home and he's not in daycare, he's with me. So yeah, I might miss a baseball game because I train and I speak on Saturdays, but you miss five days a week. See, I just got people up off me quick. I don't let, I don't let people make me feel guilty about nothing because I'm gonna close with this. Everybody has to pay the price because everybody benefits when you succeed. Remember that. That's how you get rid of guilt. Everybody around you has to pay the price because everybody benefits when you succeed. So they got to pay the price. Again, guys, this is from the motive. This is from the uh, inspiration series. Let me just tell you guys, man, I really appreciate everybody for joining me tonight. Thank you.